two mugs in a workshop. Previously on two mugs in a workshop. We took a huge gamble when we bought this BMW G310R off eBay. Untried, untested, with no recorder mileage. In the previous episode, we repaired the wiring to the rear tail light. We replaced the side reflectors, only to watch them drop off on multiple occasions. This week, we replaced the fuel filter, and Mark isn't the only pest in the workshop. Okay, so moving on to the fuel tank. Um, in the earlier episode, we showed the contamination in the bottom of the fuel tank, which potentially could have been contributing to a cold start issue. We don't actually think that that cold start issue really is an issue anymore, but as I decided it would be good practice to replace the fuel filter, the fuel tank needs to be removed because the fuel filter actually is clipped up underneath the tank. Uh, on these bikes, it should be fairly easy and straightforward to remove the fuel tank. It's a simple case of removing the breather pipe, the overflow on the top, and there's two bolts coming through the side of the tank. It then just lifts and comes off uh, its brackets. So let's just get into it. So taking off the overflow pipe on the top, the breather, I've gone for these right angle pliers grab either side of that clip, pinch it together, lets the clip go, pulls off, nice and easy that one. So that's the first part, nice and easy. Just unclips out of the tank a bit further down and we'll move on to letting the bolts go. These bolts that secure the fuel tank to the frame, 12 mil, um, just found out 13 will actually fit on it quite nicely, but there you go. They are actually 12 mil, slightly different sizes to a lot of the car bolts that we use around here. It's come out nice and easy. Again, got, there's a rubber through there. And that all looks complete. So it's just a case of removing the bolt, I think, for now. So we'll go around the other side and do the same. I thought that was all a bit strange. I've just come around the other side of the bike to find 13 mil in the other side. So yet again, got the wrong mix of bolts on this bike. So, but now the both sides are out, you can see how it lifts out. I'll get a wider view of the, um, of the tank as we lift it off. As I lift the tank, you can actually see all of the fuel supply pipes underneath. And if you see this canister, where my finger is with the green sticker on the end, that is the fuel filter. So um, it's just a matter now of removing the tank and somehow getting all these pipes off without having a fuel spillage everywhere so <laughs> well, wish me luck i've gone handheld with the camera now because it's going to be easy to show you how the tank locates over the front so as i lift it away you can see there's a big rubber lug there the tank just slides over those ever so easy to come off so it's probably not even worth doing a wide angle shot of how we lift it away the tank just literally slides backwards towards the rear of the bike and off it comes Okay, because I'm doing this single-handed, I've uh, just propped up the tank on a roll of masking tape, a roll of duct tape rather. Um, the next thing I'm going to try and remove is this clip here. And you can see there's a clip at the back which holds the electrical connector on. So that's obviously the supply to the fuel pump level sender assembly. Just trying to remove these fuel pipes. And of course, at all times when you're working on fuel systems, it's important that you make sure but there's no naked lights or other idiots anywhere near you in the workshop. Thanks, Mark. And there's the plug that just came off the um, fuel tank as I survived Mark's sabotage attempt with a cigarette lighter. All you've got to do is flick that little tab at the side, you can see sticking out at 45 degrees. Just pull it down with the screwdriver and it'll just release it off the bottom of the uh, fuel pump assembly. I've just found my favourite friends, those ear clamps, Otica ear clamps that BMW is. And this is obviously why they sell, say, when you replace the fuel filter, that you must do the fuel hoses because the fuel hoses are all going to come with new clamps on the end. So I'm off for a...
Kelfie, I'll tell you. I've now come round the other side of the bike and my plan is, rather than letting all the air clamps go with the tank in situ, because that's going to get real messy really quickly, um, the fuel supply here on this plug, it's very hard to see, but I think you can just about see there, there's like a little metal, what looks like a horseshoe shaped clamp. I think if I let that go, that clamp there, that will release the tank from the rest of the bike and then we can work on all of the filter and the other pipes with the tank off the bike. I think that's going to be the best idea. The tank needs to be swilled out anyway. So I'm going to do that. It might be very difficult to film this bit, but I'll do my very best. <laughs> Forget that last comment, guys. Uh, yeah, be careful when you're playing with that clip. Um, the good news is it's very easy to let go. And rather than pulling out, which is what initially I thought it is, you just depress it so you push that silver part of it in and the top cap of the other part of the pipe just pops off okay so i'm going to go and grab a rag and see if i can make the least amount of messes possible for the next part finger mouse finger mouse this is why it's like working with a complete imbecile in the workshop every day cheers mark finger mouse bit of piss off finger mouse. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, no drama actually. Push that. There's absolutely nothing running out of there. So, as I said earlier, push in the little silver tab, releases the top pipe, and it's job done. So, let's see if we can get the tank off the bike. Right then, so it uh, might not be the best camera angle in the world, but hopefully that is now going to just lift straight off. We'll see how much fuel goes over me. There we go. And that long pipe that's coming out there, that's just like the overflow. Drops down the back of the frame. Tank off. Tank's off. Uh, just literally poured most of the fuel out. Amateur mistake. We keep forgetting that we're recording all of this stuff. So one day I'll remember to record it all. So I'm just tipping it into an old fuel container. And there was a lot more fuel in there than the one bar on the fuel gauge gave credit for, actually. So I'm going to need to swill this out as well, I think, because there was quite a bit of... That's still coming, look at that. Honestly, guys, I put a lot of fuel into this, this container. You'd be surprised how much there is there. So um, I'll come back to it once I've emptied the tank and we'll take another look inside the tank out in the daylight and see if we can see any corrosion down the bottom. Looks like Ian's got the same flow as the guy with prostate problems here. Just a trick up. Oh dear. Well, right, with the fuel tank out, it's turning into motorcycle rebuild, eh, Mark? This, it's like we just keep keep doing stuff to it. It's just sometimes take stuff out in it. It's just not worth not doing it for the sake of a spark plug. I've just took the spark plug out with the, the old air gun. Thanks, Mark. I hope you're not putting it back no, like that as well. Not really, not really. <laughs> That's a, if anybody wants to buy a BMW 3 G, G310R, we've got one for sale. You'll never need to change the spark plug, I promise you. You'll never you. get the spark plug out. You'll never get it out, yeah. So, um, let's see, we just removed the spark plug. He's just stabbing us in the face, so it seems rude not to. Um, here's the old plug. I'm not sure we had the right tool for it. We've just used a multi spline snap on 14 to take it out it was easy to get out it's a bit sooty that plug is on the end and on the other end the bit that made us think about it was when we looked down there um the end of the plug was quite mucky as well it looked a bit corroded to be honest so um for what it's going to cost for a single spark plug it's just stupid not to so that's the next job then okay so ian's uh Put the spark plug back in. He's going to try and start the bike now. Can anybody give us any ideas why it won't start? Thank you. <laughs> more to the point, Mark. Messing about with my recording gear. Uh, <laughs> love him, really. Um, yeah, we know. We just put a bit of tape over it just until the new spark plug arrives. Stop any debris from dropping in or one of us being stupid and dropping a mug of coffee down there or something. So... Um, yeah, it's just common sense stuff. So, a uh, couple of days probably, we should have a spark plug for it. This won't be easy to film, I know, because I've got a torch sort of stuck in the way. But you see down the bottom of the tank, you can generally see a few brown spots at the bottom there. And that's what the inside of 
the tank looks like and there is a bit of rust in there it's not horrendous though to be honest so i think what we're going to do excuse the camera work it's very very difficult filming down there i think what i'm going to do is just um, replace the fuel filter we might try and cut open the old fuel filter and see if we can see any rust in there any bits of you know orange debris but for me it's not bad enough to replace that tank the tank ever does need replacing it's dead easy to get to anyway so it's hardly any extra labor to just take a few bit of fairings off and get in there at a later date these clips are really quite strong they um the best way to get them is to give the the ear on the clamp a bit of a wiggle and then like mark's doing there just use one set of pliers against another and you can see that pipe is coming up it will come off eventually just got to be careful with with what you're doing we're not particularly worried if the filter breaks because we've got a replacement but that's the general principle in getting them all off there you go removed there's actually three pipes on this filter um, so same process times three righto fuel everywhere here but old fuel filter removed you can see that's where it sits underneath the tank now um, it's just cable tied on the bottom of the tank so replacing it obviously is just going to be the reverse procedure here is the brand new bmw fuel filter there's the part number if anybody needs it made in india tip it out and you can see it even comes with the rubbers on it um, underneath so just a case of remove the bungs off the end and we'll refit it so everything's loosely fitted in place um, mark's helping me to do this actually um, these clamps i guess technically speaking they're not really supposed to be reused but i don't know, they're that bloody tight that i can't imagine it's going to do any harm whatsoever uh, a bit of grease on the ends just to make the pipes easier to get on um, but your only other option is if you really want to do this and you really do want to don't want to reuse those clamps is you're going to have to buy a full set of fuel hoses and they're quite expensive actually they're around the 30 quid mark so if you're very careful with those clips taking them off um, you'll have no problem reusing them again going back on but uh, make your own minds up anyway as i say we didn't design these to be a tutorial just supposed to be showing you what we did and just showing you that we've never done this job before so there's no reason why anybody else can't in fact you might even do a better job eh, mark <laughs> there's always a first time they went on really easy with a bit of grease on them pipes they went on straight away um i'm going to keep the camera rolling because I just want to show you clamping up those ear clamps again just making sure that they're nice and tight uh, they're just the cable ties any old cable ties will do you don't need any special ones from bmw they just clamp around this bracket on the underneath of the tank it's a fairly fairly basic setup that and uh, want a pair of pliers like that for ear clamps just clamp them together so it's just a matter now now that we've obviously parted those clamps slightly by wiggling them let's give them a good old a good old squeeze and then use a standard pair of pliers as well if you want to be belt and braces about it squeeze with the ear clamp pliers and then another squeeze just with a set of cutters like that and the third one sorted there's, no gap there. and there's absolutely no no gap whatsoever there so if i come around the side show you end on they're going nowhere they're absolutely going to be rock solid so that's it new fuel filter is on um obviously i'm going to wait now before i get the spark plug before i start putting the tank back on i'm going to see if i can get inside that old fuel filter actually without blowing myself up come outside to try and show you this so we've just chopped the end off the fuel filter you can see there's like a metal canister in there with uh, a paper element i'm not really sure it's going to show us very much but if nothing else it gave us something to do to cut it apart so i'm going to rip the end off that and start pulling out the the center of it and let's see if um let's see if it reveals anything so quite glad we did that i've uh, just levered out the paper filter 
out of the center and ignore the rusty looking bits around the edge i think that's just where it's been up against the metal filament inside but you can you can see just by looking at the color of the paper and um, you can see little bits of debris in there that it's maybe picked up so but don't forget the filter's done almost 5,000 miles of motoring uh, the bike was standing around quite a bit um, but you know it's seven years old six seven years old now so it's definitely worth for a six pound filter definitely worth replacing that's the skip look maybe i should put the motorbike in there Where they're taking it? They're taking the oh, No. Still there. Still there. <laughs> We've reached 100 subscribers. Actually, it's more like 130 at the time of recording. We're humbled that you're taking such an interest in two mugs. Apologies for my voice. I'm a little bit under the weather while I'm recording this. We're only a small channel. We've got a limited time and budget. So to keep this coming, please subscribe. It costs nothing. It's as easy as clicking on the Two Mugs logo that should be displayed on the top right of the screen. We've also included a link to the BMW G310R playlist so you can watch all the content in the series. So make sure you come on the complete journey with us and don't miss a moment. I can't wait to show you the finished BMW G310R. The grand reveal is only a few weeks away and trust me, it's going to look a lot different than when it arrived. We've still got to take the bike to BMW main dealer and get their verdict. Our aim is to reach 500 subscribers by June. When we do, we're going to celebrate with a road trip. If you want to see that, subscribe, hit the thumbs up and spread the word about two mugs in a workshop. Stay safe and thank you all for watching.